So for sign reading, you know you want to look at the key signature and the time signature, but you want to hone in on the highest note and the lowest note. Because if you're going to have a low G somewhere, you're not going to want to be playing up here. And if you need to come up for a high B or a high C, you don't necessarily want to be playing in the second position. So you want to size up the piece of music and just see where the range is. Most of the time they want you to read in the middle of the neck. And you can play in 12 keys in every fret. That's what makes guitar so wild. You know, I mean, if you think of that E in the top space of the uh, staff, it's on every single string. <laughs> so again, it does sound like, so where should I read it? You read it where most of the notes are. And the other thing that helps you decide the, the position is where is a major scale, if you're in a major key, what major scale pattern do you know that has most of those notes in it? most of that range. So that helps you decide what position to be in. Because if you know it's in the key of C, you can play it in second position. You can play it in third position. It's wherever you know a pattern that actually uh, feels familiar to you so that you could keep your eyes on the music and not necessarily worry about where all the notes are. These, of course, are prepared, so all you have to do is learn them. When you spend time with them, you'll start to see that it reads better here or reads better there. If it feels awkward and you're stretching in weird places, just try it someplace else. Um, we can go over them again, or for the first time, I should say, uh, next week. But um, see what you can come up with. It's based on the key it's in, and it's based on what feels comfortable to you to reach all those notes, to be able to play it correctly. And you want to know the chord shapes. You want to be able to make those progressions sound like a song. And it's a lot easier than you think. Uh, it gets very addictive, like playing a video game or driving a car. It's the same hand-eye-mind coordination. So reading can be a lot of fun. If you can find a reading buddy, that would be the best thing. Or just tape the chords for yourself and then sight read the melody, you know. The main difference is making this, the distinction for yourself of, I'm studying the stuff I have to use to read, and I'm actually reading. You know, you can't really drive a car unless you know what the steering wheel does and how the clutch works and when to shift and what gear to shift it into. But you practice those things sometimes completely separately than actually going someplace. But if we were gonna get in the car this afternoon and I say, hey, take me to the post office before it closes, and there isn't a pandemic, um, and you drive down the street and you bump the curb, you wouldn't go back and say, oh, let me do that turn again. I'll, I'll go back and fix that because I, I didn't do that turn so well I hit the curb. You would just keep going, mainly because <laughs> that's the direction we're headed, and maybe the post office is going to close, and I, I want to get there before it closes. So it's not about practicing the turns right now. It's about keeping where your position and keep keeping it on your destination. So when you go to play a piece, it's like putting a quarter in the video game machine. You're committed now, the game is in play. You have to teach yourself how to keep going and that means don't let yourself stop. Don't go back and fix anything. If you stop playing, imagine that the beat's still going and try to imagine where it would be if you were playing with other people and learn how to recover the fumble. So practicing those two things the sight reading stuff, what is the note, how long do I hold it or play it, where is the note, what is the chord, what kind of a groove should I play, and playing it slowly in time helps you practice the stuff. And then when you actually want to play it, even for the first time, once you've sized up a piece of music, you can play it uh, by just putting on a metronome or a drum groove and saying, well, I'm just going to start this piece and see what happens. And you can even break it down to like just one measure. I'm just gonna play this whole measure in time and then I'm gonna stop and think about the next measure. Or I'm gonna play these two measures. Or I'm gonna play these three bars or this whole line. Just not gonna stop. I don't care how much I mess up. I'm just gonna keep going and stay with that metronome. And when you do that, you can see the percentage of how much you've got right, like getting points and how much you missed. And that's good because you can always know where your reading is at and you can always up the tempo, you can always change the key or read stuff in higher, harder keys in between those scale patterns that you already know. <laughs>
and you can read things up an octave. There's lots of ways to challenge it and make it uh, a little harder. But you know, right now, make it as super easy as you can and um, just be able to play those three examples, chords and melody separately. And um, we'll just pick one of each for the test in two weeks.